So these are the two pieces of scrap steel that I will be using to make a couple of parallels out of. And no, I didn't even clean them up really. I just want to mark them up and start cutting them. And first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to black them with a uh, sharpie so I can mark them. And according to my calculations, I should be able to get just about a three and a half inch uh, set of par parallels out of each one of these. Uh, being that the jaws are four inches, that's, eh, that's acceptable for the shaper. The actual stock actually seems pretty darn square upon itself, so it's not a big deal to use uh, a scribe. The nice thing about layout lines is you can always cover it in and lay them out again. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here because these parallels are going to be three, three quarters inch wide and 450 thousandths thick. So with that said, uh, that gives me about an eighth of an inch on, uh, on, um, on the jaws for gripping. Otherwise it would literally come up to exactly the jaw height. And at that point what's the point of having parallels? At least long ways. So. And I realize this is a pretty crude layout but that's okay. Because I will be cutting close to the lines not on the lines all right so now they're both laid out four more cuts to go this is the sound the bandsaw makes when it loses teeth Hear the clunking sound? Since I figured uh, I'm cutting the parallels on the bandsaw, they're not exactly the straightest thing in the world. For one, and they leave a nasty burr. And they're, you know, not all of them are uh, very um, close to the line where I scribe. Um, since I don't have a vertical milling machine, I figured let me toss these in the shaper because these are going to be for the shaper anyway but for me to do that I want to grind a new shaper tool These are the four parts that will become parallels and uh, I'm gonna deburr the edges before I put them on the shaper.
So I figured I'd show this part of the shop a little bit more in depth. And as some of you have seen from before, my surface grinder is right next to my shaper. And the shaper is actually on a temporary cart, so on and so forth. But the thing is, as I was using the grinder, there was a lot of dust coming down on the shaper and that, that wasn't a very good thing actually and uh, what I decided to do was well besides uh, uh, later on I will be adding dust collection to the surface grinder but one of the things that I wanted was dust containment and to do that I made some improvements that tarp over there is rolled up this is one of these uh, Table clamps. That's quite old, but still functional. Oh, well, there you go. If I were to surface grind, bring that down, turn on the surface grinder, do whatever I gotta do, clean up that chunk of the area. And then bring it right back up and not have my shaper covered in muck and have to clean it every time. And I just went through cleaning the darn thing and it took me a little close to an hour really because I wanted to make sure that uh, none of the abrasive dust is actually uh, staying in there. This is my baking sheet that I use for... Um, transferring work around the shop and, uh, and this this time around we have our soon to be ground parallels some already ground parallels dr diamond dressing wheel and um, one two three blocks and of course the wrench for the actual uh, surface grinder well, right now I really don't need the wrench because it's the wheels already on there and I've oiled the machine already and these are I think a little too thick for me to use as uh, stops so I'm gonna end up using these smaller parallels There's three of these to uh, kind of pack around these and but first before we do anything I'm going to have to gr uh, address the wheel. And today's grind is going to be dry, so we're going to have to take it easy. And uh, obviously, I don't want to put any undue scratches on my grinding chuck. So, even my uh, diamond. Uh, holder is actually surface ground on both sides so it actually stays on so first things first we put this grinder in we turned on the chuck this is locked in and we bring this to just about um, to the left of the center point because this spins clockwise and uh, bring the wheel up and I'll remove the tray all right so in the interest of not crashing the wheel on that I'm gonna come back around the other way And that's exactly what I wanted. It was a heavy cut. As fast as possible. That's it, it's done.
All right, so <clears throat> I have my thousands indicator here and uh, my four parallels. I was able, let's see how repeatable this is, but I was able to actually uh, get basically zero across the board. With these, still seems to be some crap on these. but they don't rock and uh, the parallels are done there they are Like, dislike, subscribe. See you next time. Bye.